Okay, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, kind of wanted to pick up where I left off last time. I kind of got it up and running. Um, but the next step is really to kind of configure your, your workbook that you're going to be working from. Um, tons of options here. Um, you'll have even more options with the paid version versus the free version, but you get uh, it's kind of like a spreadsheet and then you get multiple tabs as your worksheets. And inside of that, you can put uh, displays on each individual sheet or ind individual worksheet. Um, so I'm going to kind of start by getting things kind of basic set up and then I'll show you actually the, the workbook that I, I tend to use for actually my actual data analysis. Um, so the first thing I want to do is actually, I mentioned before, you know, with these little um, uh, arrows here, you can uh, cycle through things like, you know, channel properties, the properties loaded into a given display. Um, but one of the things you're going to want to do, frankly, right up front, and, I, and I've already here gone through and, you know, loaded the math channels we created last time and loaded a little bit of data. So you can see the channels that's in my, that are in my data. Um, but you're going to want to actually go through each of these. And for instance, if you're not used to dealing with metric units, change them to standard units, um, as well as do things like, for some of them, set uh, fixed bounds. So let's kind of uh, show you that a little bit here. So you know, ABS is, is pretty straightforward. Accelerator, you can actually see if you scroll down here, is a percentage. Um, you know, you don't really need an alarm on that. You see you've got alarm conditions you can set. So if it goes below or above a maximum, you'll see the actual line trace will turn red. Um, you know, same thing here from a uh, plot. It's set to auto scale. You know, frankly, that's okay. It's usually going to be between zero and 100 anyways. But if you go down, let's see, down to something like, let's go down to speed. That's a good good example. So in the case of speed, the default is going to be kilometers per hour. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and I want to deal in miles per hour. I also want to go ahead and I'll leave that one auto scaling. But you may want to, for instance, just be interested in certain speed ranges. You can go ahead and set that here by turning off the auto scale and saying you want to have, I just want to see things between 50 and say 150. And now when you go ahead and plot this on your chart, you're just going to see it within that range. So again, each one of these you'll want to cycle through. So like oil temp is by default going to be in centigrade. Um, and this is actually one where you might want to set an alarm on it. So I'm going to change it to Fahrenheit, but I'm going to set an alarm condition and I'm going to say, well, if my oil temp is below 40 or it is above let's say 300, I want to basically get an alarm on that. So um, we'll also maybe do something like, um, instead of auto scaling it, we'll also uh, display always between 40 and 300. That's an example. So again, you're going to, need to go through each one of these, set these things up um, in a way that's going to make sense to you so that later down the road, you're not trying to understand why your data is doesn't make sense because maybe it's in metric instead of standard or it's auto scaled into something that doesn't actually fit the graph properly. So we've gone ahead and done that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead now and just add a display. So before we'd already done some of this. So we did insert display and we did a time distance chart. And like before, uh, I'm going to click on this, and then as opposed to cycling through here, I'll get used to using the hotkeys really quickly. Alt 2 just brings up the selections. So I'm going to go ahead and add speed, and I'm going to go ahead and add accelerator, brake, and then we did the compare time. And like before, we're also going to go in here and Go ahead and set it so it's by distance and it's tiled. OK, so this is pretty much right back where we were before. Um, so one thing that's, that um, you might want to do now is you actually you can see in here where I clipped the top because I said I didn't want to see anything below uh, 40 or above 150. You can see we're actually clipping that here. So let's say we want to add another display to the same, uh, same go ahead and worksheets. We'll do insert display. And here I might want to do, so this is something that's pretty common for me, I want to do a split report. And so for my split report, like before, we have to go back and add elapsed lap time. So you actually have values that make sense. 
we see I'm not getting any sector times. Well, I don't have a map defined here. And as opposed to going through the process again of creating a map, you can just load a map. So once you've created it the first time, you go ahead, save it off, do all your customization. So I'm gonna go ahead and load a map. This is more VIR data, we'll load VIR full. And now you'll see I've got my segments already defined in here um, with a nice printout. And I might wanna do some more tailoring. So for instance, I don't want my in or out laps. Now, if I go ahead, click on this, Alt-1 brings me back to the lap display. I mentioned this, I think, in the last video, but you see the red dot maps to the red lap. Well, that gives me the outing, the split report for that one outing. It doesn't give it to me for the other. So I actually want to create another one. But as opposed to going in and adding it and adding all the things, uh, doing the customizations again, um, I can use the normal Windows shortcuts within this tool. So if I go ahead and click on my split report, do Control-Z, I mean, control C to copy, control V to paste, I now get a copy of it on the same sheet. So I can go ahead and just actually stick this down at the bottom. And, but you'll see by default, it's gonna map to the same outing. Let me click on this bottom one. Actually, you know what? Let's organize these in a way that makes a little more sense. Put them down here. So this is all the way at the top. It's a little bit tricky sometimes. Let's start there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and connect this one to this outing. So I've selected the, the display, right click, connect, and now you'll see I've got the green dot. So now I can, I can also resize this here. So now I can look side by side at my, my two split reports. And so I could compare things like my sector times between the two outings and not just within a single outing. So another thing you might want to do is uh, on a on a separate sheet, for instance, we had a map before. So we'll go ahead and again do insert worksheet. It gives us a separate tab down here. Uh, we'll insert some additional data. So we'll do uh, the map display that we had before. And then we're also going to insert, let's see, how about we do a tabular outing report? So again, tabular outing report is something that lets you um, go and add um, certain uh, data sets to your lap so that you can see what they look like over the course of the outing. So I'm gonna go and again, click on it, Alt-2. And so I wanna see some very basic things. Everyone complains about Corbett's overheating, so let's keep a good eye on my, my fluid temperatures. So let's go ahead and do coolant temp. And we'll scroll down here and we'll do Let's see, intake air temp. You're only going to get that if you have like a late 2017 or 28 or later. I don't think the other one. Oh, no, I guess they did have IET prior to that. Um, we will get, what else? Oil temp. Outside air temp is one of those newer channels for the late 2017s or later. Officially, it's 2018. So mine's a 2017 actually has this uh, data in it. So I don't, at some point during the year, they made the change over. We'll do trans oil temp. So again, now I can see for each outing what my fluid temps were. Um, if you're like me and you know, you're a little, little on in ears and maybe you don't like the fonts real small, pretty easy to fix up, right click, properties, font. We'll go ahead and just change that to like nine, change that to nine. So again, now I got my nice you know, report of channels and you can change which thing is here too. So, you know, maybe for some reason, instead of coolant temp max, I want to keep track of, oh, outside air temperature minimum. You can just go ahead and select it there and change it. So pretty handy feature. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to load up for you the workbook that I actually use. And so I'll show you some additional um, displays that are, are I've already configured so you can get an idea of how I work and we'll have that all set up for the next time. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll save this. Um, it's also worth mentioning, by the way, that you know I, I tend to use one workbook. So I create a workbook, it has a display the way I like them. And then all I do is when I go to do a, a track event, I just delete the outings, right click, delete outing or replace outing with the new outings. If it's a different track, I'll just go ahead and, and go to the map dialog, uh, load up the, the correct map for the track and everything else will be pretty much the same. But in this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna load up my, 
display that I've been using. And I keep tweaking these things. I keep tailoring them. I keep coming up with different ways. I like to display the data. So here you'll see, like before, I have the largely the same data that I had in the, the um, time from Tizen's chart. Uh, but I've also, like compare time, I renamed it Z compare time. Why did I do that? I did that just so it would show up at the bottom because mentally that's how I like to look at it. And when I'm doing data analysis, um, I'll sometimes blow this up and then make it small again. So you also notice there's no, no title bars here. It gives you a little more real estate. That's actually an option. You just go up to tools, use small captions, and this turns it back off again. And it makes it easier for, um, you know, basically if you're gonna move them around, or you wanna resize your dialogues, um, you kinda wanna have that turned off and then turn it back on again when you're doing data analysis. Another thing I wanna point out is you see this little lock icon up here? So if you lock it here and then you go to your other displays, uh, for instance, like here, um, and lock it as well, what will happen is if you click on it, a display in one place, you can go to the display anywhere else in the uh, work, uh, workbook and you'll be in the exact same place. Really handy for when you spot an anomaly, you wanna drill in, you wanna look across displays, across sheets, um, just by linking them together, you can just pivot between them. So. In this case, a lot of times the data analysis, you know, I'll start by enlarging it and I'll look at it where I've got a lot more real estate and then I'll shrink it back down. And then what we see here is we've actually got, uh, this is one of the uh, paid for features, one of the pro features um, with Pi Toolbox. You can actually embed media. So here what I literally have is on the left, I have the top lap. On the right, I have the bottom lap. And so I can, you know, play them side by side. But more importantly, I can do things like look at the data and then with the arrow keys, I can just step through it and they'll actually stay in sync. So really, really handy to figure out what you did differently um, that may not necessarily be visible in the data itself. So I, I basically have a worksheet uh, that I call inputs and that's these, these basic channels. Um, I'll sometimes add or remove things to this uh, time distance chart, depending on what I need to do. I then have a separate one, which is my splits. So again, here, just like we saw, I can look at my splits over top of one another. I have a separate map display, just so I can look at the map itself, particularly when you're trouble, you know, when you're trying to analyze something and trying to figure out where was I on the track, um, you know, my first display here. Uh, also, because I went ahead and defined the corners and the straights and gave them numbers, uh, you'll see this up at the top. This is another option. You can add the display as your actual uh, segment names. Vehicle, uh, these are things that are, again, just kind of useful uh, for seeing what the overall vehicle health was like. So here you see a uh, tabular outing report, again, just like we showed in the, the demo dis uh, workbook. Um, here I've got a chart where I've added things like um, engine torque requests that comes directly from the ECU, um, and it's useful because if you have a motor, if you have a problem with your engine where it doesn't feel like it's making much power, you actually see the torque request will actually be lower. Um, and then I have a math channel I created called effective torque, which is actually multiplying this engine torque times the gear ratio. So I can do things like here, this is coming out of oak tree and the blue line is so much higher because I use second gear as opposed to third gear coming through oak tree. Over here, here's another one. This is, uh, I think, turn 10. Uh, I downshifted into uh, third instead of fourth. Um, also, you can see the, I have the boost pressure here. So again, I can kind of look at the boost pressure across the lap and see where it is. Suspension, um, I don't do a ton with this right now. Uh, frankly, I got a lot to learn. Um, but what I have here is the suspension displacement data, both left and right, or left, right, uh, front and rear. Again, taken directly from the car, so you can see how much suspension uh, is moving through the lap. So you can see, for instance, here, there's a ton of it. This is actually, um, I think, going up through the S's. We'll do data analysis on these laps later. And then down below, this is another channel I created, which is uh, it's just the derivative of um, the actual um, movement. So what this does is shows you uh, suspension travel speed. So you see again how quickly the suspension is moving, the velocity of it. And then the last one here is 
um, some tire and wheel data. So again, we get tire temps, we get tire pressures. Uh, this data is kind of skewed because one of my laps didn't have TPMSs in. Um, here you have the actual wheel speeds. So again, if you look right there in the middle, um, you'll see where I actually uh, looks like I started to have the wheels spin up a little bit. Um, one other real quick thing about this, and again, this will be covered more in the data analysis section, is uh, Z and backspace are zoom in and zoom out. So if I just hit the Z key, I can keep zooming in on this display until I get really finely grained. And again, I can click on that and I can go look at another display and I'm also already zoomed in and then I can backspace and zoom back out until I get to the full lap. So that's how I have my workbook set up. Uh, again, you kind of got to find what works for you. 90% of what I do is actually done in this main display here and, and we'll cover that when we do some actual data analysis in the next video. All right, hope you all find this useful. Appreciate the, uh, the feedback and the questions, keep them coming. And uh, everybody have a, a good week.